In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can make your clients happy as a virtual assistant. And of course, this is golden advice because I am a client myself and also a virtual assistant agency owner. <laughs> Judy Rallius TV, the place to be where we talk about business, productivity, and going after the life that we aspire. I'm your host, Judy Rallius, the CEO of Virtualasting.com, which is an outsourcing company for virtual assistants in the Philippines. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get the latest content and freebies. We're found on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, and Stitcher Radio. All right, so as I said earlier, I'm going to talk about actionable steps and ways that you can make your clients happy as a virtual assistant. Now, why are we gonna be discussing this in the first place? Well, if you're interested to keep your job as a virtual assistant, trust me, you're gonna need this, okay? Because I have seen so many people who cannot keep their clients yes maybe they do they am able they are able to get clients they are able to get hired but most of the time they get fired i mean they get hired and then fired hired and then fired hired and then fired i have seen this so many times like in a span of let's say i see so many people who say that they have like 10 years of experience and then and then I see like, oh my God, they've worked with like, what, 50 companies, 50 clients? I'm not kidding. They have so many, like very short experiences and they would just say that, oh, that was just a contractual thing. Well, newsflash, the reason why they didn't hire you for long term is because you weren't that productive, you weren't that valuable, and most of all, they didn't like you okay I'm being truthful here because if you really display very impressive professionalism work ethics and skills there is no reason why clients can make their contractual temp work permanent okay especially if you're contributing positively to a business and I'm saying this as a friend I'm saying this as somebody who has worked um, online for 10 years and has a lot of clients who has been, you know, um, been with us for over 10, nine years, okay? And it's also me saying that the reason why I have employees who still work with me for like more than seven years is because they displayed these skills and they displayed these attitudes so i want to share this to you because newsflash just because you know wordpress or you know how to make phone calls or social media is not enough reason to keep you in a company for many years and if you want job security i mean there is no job security but if you have if you want to like at least keep your job in um, a longer term, make sure that you have these things, all right? So without further ado, number one is arrive early to work. Okay, so this is my number one because there's nothing that grinds my gears than an employee who is always freaking late, okay? Uh, and always having these excuses like, oh, there was traffic or like, oh, I wasn't able to like wake up early um, and all that jazz. I mean, I was an employee myself and I was a latecomer and I know all these excuses, guys, so they won't fly with me and definitely they won't fly with your client. So please 
don't be late be early and it's always an extra bonus to be early be 30 minutes early okay even if it's an online job be 30 minutes early make it known to your client that you're already there 30 minutes early and trust me they're gonna be impressed okay next is be eager to learn so there's nothing also as annoying as somebody who would answer you with let's say for example i will ask you okay do you know how to um build like a wordpress website and then that person would say no i can't do that oh my god oh my god <laughs> i don't like people like that i want to hear people who will say i don't know that but i'm willing to learn give me time to learn right okay practice being that proactive person which leads me to number three be proactive okay let's say for example you are observing that your client is having a hard time with something or let's say they need you know an extra hand with a particular like task or if you know that you can do something more even if they're just giving you like x amount of tasks be proactive okay say and volunteer like hey you know um Judy, I can do that. If you would like me to um, organize those files, let me go ahead and do that. Don't be shy about offering help. At this financial crisis and times, you want to make sure that you're that girl who is like um, your client's pet. If there's a teacher's pet, you want to be the client's pet because you don't want to be that first person they're going to hire I mean, they're gonna fire in case of like a um, uh, of like a, a retrenchment. Okay. Next is be very willing to help. So this is actually like very um, like it's it's very near the pre be proactive part. But I say this and want to stress out: be very willing to help. And let's say, for example. Even if your help is not asked for, make sure to offer help, okay? Make sure, don't wait for your client to say, hey, I need help with this, okay? If you see that there is a need, if you see that the customers are piling up and then there are nobody, there's nobody on the phones, offer, offer, okay? Offer to be that person. And you're gonna be like the surefire person to be the most um, valuable in that business, other than your client, of course. Number five is go above and beyond in delivering work. So you're already proactive, you're already offering help, but then you're very mediocre in doing your job. It's still like, it's still not gonna cut it. You have to make sure that you are delivering excellent work try your very best let's say for example um let's say you you were tasked to write um like product descriptions and you do have an option to just copy paste things but to be the to be like going above and beyond is making sure that you write things with um you know the sense of the customers in mind to be able to like really um, give out like quality work and the best kind of work that you can give okay all right number six no excuses oh my god oh my god <laughs> this is up there <laughs> with the latecomers i hate people who are full of excuses Oh my god like i roll my eyes every time an employee of mine is gonna say oh miss i can't do it oh my god to be truly frank i listen to them and i would say oh really oh okay but then in my head i'm like whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> i don't fucking give a damn oh my god <laughs> that's true because i know an excuse when i hear one okay because I'm a person who doesn't like to give excuses to myself. And that's why I know when I hear an excuse from somebody else. And mind you, 
Entrepreneurs are people who hate excuses because we are people who are very goal-driven. And we, when you are goal-driven and you have plans for a business, you hate excuses. So don't give us excuses, okay? Number seven is be results-oriented instead of being focused on the hours that you are working. There is nothing that I hate a lot <laughs> and even more than people who are late and even more than people who have excuses than people who take my time, who take billable hours and are not able to give something valuable to the business. Let's say, for instance, you've clocked in 160 hours in a month, but then you were actually just on Facebook and your to-do list and your lists uh, that you were supposed to accomplish were not yet done, were all like unfinished projects, then you are definitely the first person that I want to kick out in my company. And mind you, if you are that person on your client's team, then you better look then you better start looking for a job because you have no place there okay and what i mean by this is make sure you have to think about this your clients are paying you for the hours okay but if you're also like thinking that your hours just looking on facebook is worth you know is worth paying for you're in for a rude awakening we want to see results in those hours okay i am getting so worked up but oh my god <laughs> okay number eight is submit your work on time or earlier there's nothing that impresses me than somebody who will say that they will submit their um their work on a particular schedule and then they send it to me on time or even earlier oh my god and that's already like a plus for me like I'm already thinking of, you know, bonuses when I do that, when, when they do that. And so be that kind of person, okay? Although there are um, deadlines that can be a little bit unrealistic, make sure that when you cannot do a deadline, before you even do it, set an expectation with your client and say, you know, I think I won't be able to do it in one day, but maybe three days. Be honest, okay? And which leads me to number nine, which is always update your client over communicate. So let's say, oh my God, I have been in this scenario many times wherein I'm waiting for, let's say, a particular file to be done. And my employee keeps on saying, I mean, keeps on like canceling my calls. Like, for example, when I'm trying to call them, when I'm trying to chat with them on Facebook, like, hey, where's where's the file that I was asking for? And then you go on scene zoned. There's nothing that is so annoying. <laughs> I keep on saying that because this really grinds my gears. But I know it's human nature to try to want to uh, run away from your boss when you're not yet done with something. But you know what? If you just communicate, if you just give an update, to say that, hey, I'm not yet done. I know that I promised to be done with this yesterday, but I'm still 80% done. I'm so sorry, but I'm doing it right now and I will be able to turn it in by black, okay? Make, like, set an expectation when you can realistically send it, okay? And then over-communicate. Make sure that your client is not the one who is trying to chase you with the deadline. Make sure that you're the one who is giving them the updates, okay? <sighs> well, well, <laughs> all right. And then number 10, do things with joy and a big smile always. All right. There's nothing that really warms my heart than workers who are happy at what they do and who show me that they are grateful at the job opportunity and the chance to, you know, make this business uh, wonderful, okay? And these are really the people that I keep for years and years and years. And unfortunately, you know, in a company, um, let's say in, in a team of, let's say, more than 100 people, there are only a handful of people who are like that. So if 
You want to be on your clients and or bosses number one list. Make sure that you are doing things with joy and a big smile always. All right. All right. That was a lot. That was a lot. Anyway, um, I hope that this was valuable. I hope that marami kayong natutunan. Um, if you want to learn more about being a virtual assistant or being a virtual professional and working online, we have a training, okay? Just go to the playlist and look for the virtual assistant training 2020 playlist. And you can also send your application form to jobs.virtualassing.com. We are always hiring. We're always training people and you're super welcome at Virtual Asting. And again, this is your host, Judy Rallius, the CEO of virtualasting.com. And I'm inviting you to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to learn more about working from home, business, and a lot more. Bye.